What's going on guys? It's the Draft Nerd and I'm bringing you guys my top 10 running back rankings for the 2025 NFL Draft. Now this is a lot better class than we had in 2024 with a lot bigger names and top end talent. So without further ado, let's get into it. Alright, coming in at number 10 we got Nick Singleton, the running back out of Penn State. And he has really good size at 6 foot 224 pounds. He's kind of like your prototypical running back that you would make in a video game, maybe the new college football game. Um, and he had a really good freshman year where he really put his name on the map early into the year as a freshman. Kind of had a sophomore slump last season. Uh, didn't really create as many explosive plays as he did as a freshman. But let's just get into some of the positives first. Like I said, he's got really great size for the position. He has really thick, powerful legs that makes it tough to tackle. He can run through tackles and kind of just bounce off of tackles as well. He also plays with a lot of physicality. And with that size, he's able to lower the shoulder and move the sticks. And even though he is a bit of a bigger back, he has good speed and has enough breakaway speed to break off big runs. The only problem was that in 2023, he didn't really do so. Like I said, in 2023, he looked noticeably more stiff. Uh, when he was a freshman, he looked like he had a lot of juice, a lot of, you know, almost, I don't want to compare him to Saquon Barkley, but a lot of, you know, fluidity in his hips. And in 2023, he looked just a little bit more stiff, and that could have been because of injury. Could have been because of a lot of things, but from what I've seen, there was a noticeable drop-off from his freshman year to his sophomore year. Uh, like I said, he wasn't a big play threat. I believe he only had like seven explosive runs, which means uh, runs of 15 plus yards. Uh, he failed to eclipse over a thousand yards. Just really a forgettable season for Nick Singleton. Not to mention that he split carries with a running back that just missed a list in Catron Allen. He struggled to force missed tackles. That kind of goes into his, you know... 2023 sophomore slump and then he didn't show the best vision either and that Penn State offensive line didn't do him any favors but you know when they did black for him I feel like some of the times he wasn't picking the right holes to run through and so Nick Singleton is a top 200 player for me I think he has a lot of room to improve and if he gets back to his freshman form I think he could easily be a top 100 pick all right, coming in at number nine, we got Damian Martinez, the running back from Miami, formerly of Oregon State. He transferred to Miami this season, and he's a bit of a bigger back as well at six foot, 232 pounds. That's actually pretty big for the running back position nowadays. I have him as a top 175 pick right now. Moving to a bigger school like Miami can, you know, really put him on the map more, and I could see him definitely improving from that top 175 projection. But for right now, I want to pump the brakes on him. You know, for being a bigger back, he has really good burst and, you know, solid top end speed. And I think he can cut and change direction pretty well for size as well. But when it really comes down to it, he's a power back. You know, he's going to lower his shoulder. He's going to look for contact. Uh, he has great contact balance. He holds onto the ball. And I think he picks the right holes more often than not. Uh, I don't necessarily think he's much of a receiving back as most bigger backs aren't. And as far as blocking goes, I think he's solid. Definitely think he needs improvement, but he has the size to be a really good blocker. Moving on to number eight, we got Raheem Sanders, AKA Rocket Sanders. And he now plays at South Carolina, formerly from Arkansas. And he's another big running back at 6'2", 225. And that 225 is on the lower end. He's rumored to have slimmed down about 15 pounds. He, last year he was playing around that 240 pound mark. I also got a top 175 grade on him with, you know, room to improve. Uh, and really, the thing with Raheem Sanders is he's got really good movement skills for his size. And that was when he was playing at 240. I can only imagine what it is at 225. Uh, like I said, he slimmed down about 15 pounds, which I think is a good thing. I think he could be a potential threat in the receiving game. Uh, he showed a lot of promise there with good hands, the ability to run a little bit more nuanced of routes, you know, more than just screen and swing passes. I think he can he, he can run a solid Texas route. He can run a good, you know, out route. Nothing nothing that's going to be, you know, too insane for a running back. But I think he's got a little bit of juice in the receiving game. And I think he's got blocking upside. Uh, you know, he was walking around at 240 last season, slimming down a bit. I don't see that changing much. Again, 225 is still pretty big for a running back. Uh, the things that you worry about with Raheem Sanders, though, is... Uh, you know, he doesn't have the best vision in the world. He chooses wrong holes a lot of the time. Doesn't necessarily have the long speed. Uh, I think it'll be improved now that he's down at 225. And then he also just has durability concerns. You know, he spent a lot of last year injured because he was draft eligible last season, but he just missed a lot of time at Arkansas to, I believe, a lower leg injury. 
Uh, so, you know, hoping to come back healthy this year with South Carolina and having a really big year. And I believe around this time last season, he was my RB like three. So definitely has some upside to him, but I want to, you know, play it safe with him for right now. I want to see how he looks again at that slim down weight and, you know, with him healthy. All right, coming in at number seven, we got Trevor Etienne. And yes, that's the brother of Jaguars running back Travis Etienne. And he just transferred to Georgia, formerly from Florida. And he's that shorter, stockier type of build at 5'9", 205 pounds. And he's my first top 150 player. Uh, I think he's got extreme explosiveness, as you can see with that A speed, A burst, and A minus change of direction. Athletically, he's phenomenal. I think he's got really good elusiveness, and I think he's got reliable hands out of the backfield. I don't necessarily think he's the most nuanced of route runners, but he's got reliable hands, and if you get it, and if you get the ball into his hands, he's got the you know elusiveness and big play potential to make any you know any catch go to the end zone. I think he's got the ability to be skinny in between the tackles. I don't think he's going to be an outside zone type of guy. I think he's got good vision in between the tackles, which is always a plus. Um, and then moving on to some of the cons, like I said, not a nuanced route runner, more of a swing pass, screen pass type of guy. I don't think he's the most powerful guy ever. Again, 5'9", 205. He's not going to lower his shoulder and run you over, but he will bounce off of tackles and you know run through him if you try to tackle him with your arms. And then I think he's a very inconsistent pass blocker. And, you know, at that size, it's kind of expected, but he shows flashes of being a really good pass blocker. But then other times, he just looks pitiful out there trying to, you know, block guys. So I think he's got the potential to be a good pass blocker, but maybe needs to put more effort into it. But yeah, I think he could end up being a really good player. I don't know if I would consider him, you know, starting caliber, at least as a rookie. But I think he's got all the traits to be just as good as his brother. If you want even more draft content and my full 2025 draft guide, my Patreon is the perfect thing for you. You'll get access to all of my player rankings, which are updated daily. Plus, you'll get to see my full summer eval on players, advanced stats on players, and my draft grades on them as well. Not to mention weekly mock drafts and mock draft reactions. It's the best way to support me and the channel. Not to mention it's only $5. Again, only $5. You can't even get a Big Mac for that price anymore. So what are you waiting for? Click the link in the description or the pinned link in the comments. And join the family over there on Patreon. Now, back to the video. Coming in at number 6, we got Devin Neal. And he's slowly becoming one of my guys of this draft. He's a running back out of Kansas, and he's 5'11", 210 pounds, so solid size, nothing insane. And he's a top 150 pick for me right now, and I fought really hard not to put him as a top 100 pick. Uh, I think he's super slippery and a really creative runner with some of the best juke moves you'll see. You know, just watching his highlights, you probably think he's a first-round pick, but there are some concerns that I have with him, but he's a very fun player to watch. I think he keeps his legs turning through contact. Again, not the biggest guy in the world, but, you know, he's got that you know, slight physicality to him. Not necessarily power, but just, you know, that hard nose play style. And then I also think he's got receiving potential. You know, not the best hands or the best routes, but just get the ball into his hands in space and he can make a negative play into a positive play with ease with just one or two juke moves. Some of the cons I got with him is I don't think he's got elite top end speed, really good burst and really good, you know, fluidity in his hips, but I don't think he's going to outrun everyone on the field. I think he's got you know, average to good speed. Uh, he's not going to run anybody over. Like I said, not, you know, he plays more of that finesse game at the running back position, not necessarily the power game. You know, I don't think he's got great vision inside the tackles. Uh, he's more of that type of player where he's going to look to bounce things outside and, you know, make plays in space. I don't think he's got the best vision, you know, just running downhill. And then he also can't, pat, and, and then he also can't pass block very well. Uh, definitely more of a scat back in my opinion. You're not you're not gonna ask him to block many plays. You're gonna you know get him out on a swing route just in case you know you need to dump it down to him. But he's a really fun player to watch, and it was hard to not put him in the top five. But like I said, this class is very very good. All right, coming in at number five, we got Travion Henderson, a pretty familiar name if you're you know anywhere in the type of draft space because he was eligible last year. He's a running back out of Ohio State. And he's 5'10", 212 pounds, and he's my first top 100 player. Now, I was a big fan of Travion Henderson last season. I think I, I think I had him as my number one running back. So that kind of puts things in perspective about how good this running back class is compared to last season. Um, I think he's a big play threat waiting to happen. You know, he's got all the athletic tools to break plays off. 
Um, I think he can be utilized in the pass game. You just get him out into space and, you know, have him make magic. Uh, I don't necessarily think he's, you know, the best back when it comes to deciding which hole to run through. I think that's his biggest problem. Um, you know, athletically, he reminds me a lot of Saquon Barkley. Not to say he's going to be as good as Saquon Barkley, but he has the same stature as Saquon Barkley and the same type of play style where he wants to break things off to the outside and, you know, make those big plays. And, you know, that can get you into trouble when you're not as good as Saquon Barkley is. Uh, so I think he has the tendency to get a little too fancy in the backfield. Um, he doesn't necessarily take what the defense gives him. He dealt with injuries the past two seasons. If you take a look back to his freshman year, I mean, he was the next Saquon Barkley, in my opinion. He was, you know, making play after play after play. Dealt with injury in 2020, what would it be, 2022? Um, you know, I believe he missed the playoffs with a lower leg injury and kind of dealt with this, another lower leg injury in 2023. And he just hasn't really been healthy. Hopefully this season we'll get to see him fully healthy. And he'll also be splitting carries with a running back we'll get to in a little bit. And Quinchon Judkins, his teammate now. So I think, you know, all signs are pointing towards him having a really a really good season next year. Um, and, you know, I'm, I'm hoping for the best for Trevion Henderson because he seems like a really good dude in interviews. And his play style is super fun to watch. All right, coming in at number four, we got Travion Henderson's teammate I was talking about in Quinchon Judkins. Uh, he's a transfer from Ole Miss, now at Ohio State, and he's a guy similar to Nick Singleton where they both had really good freshman years and put themselves on the map. The only difference is Quinchon Judkins picked up right where he left off his freshman year in a sophomore year and, you know, added to it. Uh, he's six foot, 220 pounds, so really good size, and he's my first top 50 pick, and I could really see any one of these four guys coming up to be a first-round pick. I don't think there's going to be four running backs in the first round by any means, but I think any four of these guys have a case to be a first-round pick. And Quinchon Jenkins is just a really good player. You know, he doesn't have many holes in his game. Uh, he's got very good contact balance with a really thick lower half that makes it really hard to tackle him. Guys kind of just bounce off of him. Uh, he's almost like a pinball machine. Um, I think he keeps his legs churning through contact even better than Devin Neal. Like, once you get hands on this guy, he's going to keep churning those legs and try to, you know, get the first down. And I also think he's got really good vision and really good patience. You know, he's willing to wait in the backfield to let blocks develop, and he's also able to just shoot through them when he does see that hole. Some of the things I have problems with, which there aren't many, but I don't think he offers much in the receiving game. But for what he lacks in the receiving game, I think he makes up for it with his blocking ability. I think he's got really good, you know, technique when it comes to blocking, and he gives a pretty good effort with it as well. Um, and then athletically, he's, you know, just a bit average. You know, I don't think he's bad by any means. I don't think he's slow, or I don't think he's stiff. But, you know, he's just got solid burst, solid explosiveness, solid long speed. You know, I think he's able to, you know, cut on a dime, and his change of direction is better than his you know, burst and speed, but again, you know, just an all-around great player, and, you know, it was hard for me to place him at four because he would be RB1 in a few draft classes in the past, you know, like, he would be RB1 last year if he was eligible last year, let's just say that. Moving on to number three, we got Ashton Ginty, the running back from Boise State, and he's a bit of a short stockier running back at 5'9", 215 pounds, and again, he's a top 50 pick, could easily be a first-round pick in my opinion. And, you know, he's probably one of the most explosive athletes on this list. Uh, again, A's across the board with his athletic traits like speed, burst, and change of direction. I think he can create plenty of big plays at the next level. Um, I think he's a creative runner. He's a fun, you know, player to watch. Uh, good speed, good burst, and, you know, he's really good in the receiving game as well. A lot of people like to make this comparison, and I think Ashton Ginty is more deserving of this comparison, and that's Alvin Kamara. You know, I think he's an explosive athlete who can, you know, really be effective in the receiving game, similar to how, you know, Alvin Kamara was when he first came into the league. Um, you know, really the only thing that I have a major problem with with Ashton Ginty is he cannot hold on to the football. He had five fumbles last season, which is, you know, just unacceptable. If you can't hold on, if you can't hold on to the ball, you're not going to be able to get onto the field in the NFL. Um, and then I also think he gears down a little bit in open field to, you know, make guys miss. He doesn't necessarily, you know, keep his momentum when he, you know, makes hard cuts. And then, you know, he's not the most powerful back. He's more of a finesse player. But, you know, I still think he can, he has good power to his game. Just he's not a power back. And then the only other thing you could maybe say about Ashton Genty is, 
you know, he plays at Boise State, you know, doesn't face the, you know, the best competition, but man, when you watch him play, I think he could do that against anyone in on the planet, you know, just his movement skills are incredible, and I think he's got pretty good vision as well, so again, Ashton Genty, really solid running back, the only reason he's number three and not number one really just comes down to his ball security, like I said, five fumbles is a little bit too unacceptable in my opinion. All right, coming in at number two, we got Omari and Hampton, the you know, big bruiser back from North Carolina. He's six foot, 220 pounds, and you know, again, he's just a he's a power back at its finest. You know, he's able to lower the shoulder and just run right through guys. He plays with the most physicality I've seen in a long time. Like, he just I don't know, he just invites contact. He looks for it and he just runs people over. Um, and with that comes you know not the best athleticism. I think he's got solid athleticism, but, you know, he's not going to burn you by any means. He's going to, you know, look to run you over more so than, you know, make you miss and, you know, try to juke, spin, all of that. He had a bit of a fumbling problem in 2023 with three fumbles. You know, that's not as bad as a guy like Ashton Genty, but, you know, three fumbles, you got to hold on to the ball. And then, like I said, he doesn't make people miss. He's not going to juke you or, you know, spin or create, you know, run to the outside. He's more of a, you know, between the tackle, run you over, pick up the first down type of guy. And, you know, I'm a big fan of those type of running backs, and that's why I got him at number two. And then coming in at number one, we got Ollie Gordon. And I don't think a lot of people have Ollie Gordon as their number one running back. And, you know, I think that's a little bit disrespectful to him. You know, he started off the season, I believe, not even starting. And then early on in the season, he really got his chance to shine, and, you know, he just didn't look back. He plays at Oklahoma State, and he's 6'1", 211 pounds, and he is a first-round player, in my opinion. I think if any of these running backs are going to be a first-round pick, it's going to be Ollie Gordon. You know, he's got, you know, good enough speed, good enough burst. Uh, you know, he's more of a smooth athlete than a twitchy athlete, but what really, you know, makes Ollie Gordon better than all these other running backs is that he's such a patient runner with amazing vision. You know, he'll sit in the backfield for, you know, two seconds before, you know, actually choosing hole to run through. He has some of the most creative vision I've ever seen. Uh, I think he's got deceptive speed. Like I said, you know, he's more of a smooth athlete with long strides. He's not necessarily that twitchy guy that most of these running backs are. Uh, I think he's got really good contact balance, a bit of a more high-waisted running back, but that doesn't stop him from, you know, breaking off tackles. And... You know, if you want to nitpick with this guy, you could say, you know, he doesn't have the best burst. Uh, like I said, you know, he's a bit of a long strider. He takes a little bit to get up to that top speed. And then he had a bit of a drop issue with four drops in 2023. I think he can be a receiving back in the NFL. Uh, just needs to work on those drop issues. But, you know, I'm pretty sure he led the nation in, you know, rushing yards. He had, you know, one of the best seasons for a running back. He you know, was a dark horse in the Heisman talks. You know, he got early hype for, you know, the Heisman, but didn't end up getting it, obviously. But I think Ali Gorn has the best chance to be a first-round pick. And, you know, there's not many holes to poke in his game. He's just a really solid running back. But, yeah, that's going to do it. Let me know what you guys think of my list down in the comments. You know, I haven't looked at every running back. So if you have problems with, you know, a running back not being here, it might just be because I haven't watched him. But, you know, let me know down in the comments. And if you like the video, please consider subscribing. And if you want to take it that extra mile, you can always sign up for my Patreon. Again, it's only $5. But with that being said, I'm the Draft Nerd, and thanks for watching.